Welcome to Empath Inspiration, where you are honored for your ability to feel so much, so deeply. Each week, you will learn practical information, tools, and insights that empower empaths to live healthy, productive lives. Here's your host, author, intuitive, natural health and holistic nutrition consultant, and the developer of the Foundation's Healing System, a revolutionary self-healing method designed specifically for empaths, Dr. Janice Carlin. Welcome to Empath Inspiration. This is the fifth episode of the new series, and I'm so happy you're here. Today, I'm talking about optimizing the energy of your environment and your body. Scientists are learning more and more about how our environment plays a huge role in our health. We're born with a set of genetics, but this doesn't mean that we're doomed to suffer from certain health conditions and diseases. The reason for this is epigenetics. The energies we're exposed to during our lives can actually cause certain genes to turn on or off. And this is what epigenetics is about. And these energies occur on multiple levels, some of which we can see and some that we can't, which is why I always talk about working with as much of the energy possible that we can, that we can. I always promote and teach living a lifestyle that's as clean as possible. And I do it for reasons that have been proven in science, as well as persistent intuitive guidance that I receive. Exposures to toxic energies can turn on genes that can severely limit the quality of our lives, in addition to causing direct damage to our cells and organs. A person can be predisposed to a certain health condition, but until there's a triggering event, like these toxic energies I'm talking about, they may not experience the ill health. Triggering events can include things like chemical toxic exposures, extremely emotionally or physically traumatic events, antibiotic use, heavy metals that get trapped in the body. Heavy metals are really hard to get out of our bodies. Vaccines, surgeries, severe infections, and even stress. Sensitive people are prone to experiencing this. A majority of highly sensitive people have genetic variations in certain genes that are directly connected to their body's ability to detoxify itself and to efficiently process and eliminate chemicals and toxins. The more affected these genes are by continual toxic exposure, the less able they are in being able to perform their natural functions, such as vital methylation. So what happens when these genes can't function correctly and methylation is limited in our body? Well, it's not good. The body isn't able to transport nutrients where they need to go, make enough cellular energy, build and process neurotransmitters, process chemicals and toxins, process hormones, produce the protective coating we need on our nerves and build immune cells. And the result are experiences that vary from person to person, but they involve intensely life-disrupting health experiences that include heart disease, thyroid dysfunction, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, neurological issues, chronic viral infections, neurotransmitter imbalances which result in mental health diagnoses and sleep problems, cancer, schizophrenia, decreased repair of tissue damage, improper immune function, neural tube defects, Down syndrome, multiple sclerosis, ADD and ADHD, Huntington's disease, Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's, and autism. If you or your child is a sensitive person and you want to have a chance at healing and being healthy, you must, I just can't emphasize this enough, you must keep as many toxins out of your body and your home as you possibly can. And you also have to figure out what you need by way of nutrients in order to support your body's unique needs. Having certain genetic variations, and especially if they've been triggered to turn on and activated, means that you may need specific supplements to make up for what your body isn't able to do for itself. You also have to eat and avoid certain foods based on your body's needs. 
it's a choice you have to make if you want to be healthy. Beyond the fact that my son and I are sensitive empaths, we have genetic variations that explain why we struggled and suffered so much before I made the changes in our lives that we needed in order for us to heal and to thrive. Now we've stopped those genes from controlling our lives in a negative way and have taken control ourselves so that we can be happy and healthy. My son loves what he eats and he knows exactly why he needs to eat the way that he does. I've educated and empowered him about what he has to do in order to be healthy. And he's a happy and successful guy who doesn't even resemble the little boy who couldn't sleep and screamed and was sick all of the time and just could barely function in this world when he was young. I'll, I'll use a common health example here to make a real life connection to what I'm talking about also. If you have the genetic components that make you prone to insulin resistance and you have a lifestyle that turns on those genes, you can end up with type 2 diabetes. Science explains clearly that having excess body fat and not exercising leads to insulin resistance as the fat blocks the insulin from doing its job of transporting glucose into the cells. When glucose levels are elevated in the blood, the entire body becomes damaged. Now, this is a really serious, serious thing. Toxic exposures that you have on top of being overweight and not exercising enough can activate the genetic variations and result in the life-destroying disease that is type 2 diabetes. However, if you lose and maintain a healthy weight, get consistent exercise and quality sleep, eat a pure and clean diet, keep chemicals out of your home and off of and out of your body, and you can effectively reverse this disease. It's been proven time and time again. The environment that you create in your home and inside of your body has everything to do with whether or not you will experience this terrible disease, whether or not you have the genetic disposition for it. Now, if you effectively reverse the insulin resistance, but you revert back to a toxic lifestyle, you allow the genes to become activated, you're triggering them, and you can find yourself right back where you started. So people may falsely believe. You see, you know, you can't reverse type 2 diabetes. I have it again. But no, this isn't true. And this is where people are so confused. You've got to consistently work with the environment in order to create a healthy life for yourself. And then once you do, yes, the condition is reversible. Now, here's some more examples just to help you make connections between your daily actions and health conditions that you or your child may be experiencing. Now, it's proven scientifically that the combination of certain chemical preservatives and additives and sugars exacerbate hyperactivity in children. For some children, keeping all of these toxic elements consistently out of their diet along with the foods that they're allergic or sensitive to and inflammatory grains and dairy can result in a cessation of the hyperactive symptoms of ADHD. Allowing these hyperactive prone children access to ingesting those types of foods is sabotaging their ability to function to their highest capacities. So if they've got the genetic predisposition for that and then you feed them an organic or you feed them the toxins, it's going to happen for them. You're triggering it and you're turning it on. So feeding them an organic grain and sugar and dairy-free diet can allow them to perform better in school and live happy, healthier lives. So why not do it, right? Why not do it? We're programmed to believe that we're denying ourselves and our children happy life experiences by eliminating junk foods and following special diets. But this is not true. When we do it, we're allowing ourselves and our children to be more healthy and successful without the use of toxic medications. Our bodies can't tolerate and process junk. We need real foods. And due to the expression of our genetic variants, we may not be able to effectively process foods like gluten, 
dairy, sugar, or other foods. It's a gift we give to ourselves and our children to work with the energy of our foods to provide only safe nourishment that doesn't create adverse symptoms that impede our abilities to function to our highest capacities in our lives. We can we all deserve this gift. Now, people want quick fixes and pills to take so they can continue living toxic lifestyles, but healing doesn't work this way. Healing isn't the same as covering up symptoms, and the only way to begin the healing process is to stop the ongoing toxic onslaught in the first place. I have said it before, and you'll hear me continue to say it. The reason that empaths and highly sensitive people are here on this planet is to help to change the world for the better. If we didn't have these genetic setups and we could function highly by eating, drinking, and breathing junk and chemicals, then how would that benefit our world? This planet is suffering because of the toxicity that people have created on it. The earth just can't take a pill and wait for this all to be over. When we rid this world of chemicals, everyone and the entire planet will finally be able to heal. Our genes lay the blueprint for us to know what we have to do in order to be healthy. They tell us what we have to do in order to fulfill our missions for being here. Our group mission is to be of service and of help. If we want to be in alignment with that, we have to do what we have to do, whether we want to or like it or not. The environment that the earth needs in order to heal is exactly what our bodies need. Purity, nourishment, and only life-saving necessary interference. So I'm going to share with you now some tips for making your home environment a non-toxic place for your body to live in. So I'll just give you a list here of some, some tips and things you can do. Only use natural cleaning products in your home. The toxic chemicals and cleaning products stay in the air and you breathe them and they stay on the surfaces and in the carpets and, and you touch them and you, you, know, you continue to breathe them in. Natural cleaning products you can find all over the place these days. Also, only use natural body products on yourself, including shampoo and soaps and cosmetics. Keep um, synthetic fragrances off of you and out of them. Most of the natural products are made with essential oils or even fragrance-free, which is even better uh, for sensitive people. Use air purifiers to clean the air inside your home. But don't use plug-ins or spray air fresheners. Those are toxic energies. Don't put that in your house, but you can use air purifiers and try to open the windows when you can uh, if the air is clean outside to to bring in fresh air and air out the, the old stagnant air from your home. Um, don't allow any smoking in or around your home. Obviously toxic. Use, use healthy oils for cooking that don't release toxic fumes. You know, a lot of people think olive oil is so healthy and it is if you don't heat it, once you heat it, it becomes toxic And when you ingest it or just breathe it in. Processed vegetable oils are also uh, mostly toxic. The fumes go into the air and they stay there when you breathe them in. You can also keep clutter picked up in your home so that the energy can flow freely. That's really important. Um, use non-toxic bedding like natural latex and organic cotton or wool. Um, you know, you sp we spend a huge amount of hours sleeping in our bed. Hopefully, you're getting good quality sleep. And you're just breathing in and the mattresses and pillows, you know, and sy synthetic um, bedding can um, has huge amounts of toxins. So be aware of that. There are, are, are better choices. Also avoid getting more new furniture than necessary because it off gases toxic fumes just like the, the mattresses do. I mean, any of the furniture that's stuffed with foam um, is going to be treated with those flame retardant chemicals and other chemicals. Also that um, particle board, you know, that some furniture is made out of really off gases chemicals. So make sure you vacuum and dust regularly. Um, you can also put plants inside of your home. 
you know, they add oxygen and they clean the air and they look nice and they just feel good to be around. Plants are important. And one more thing is, please don't believe that you have to have, quote, spiritual things in your home to make it a safe or highly vibrational place to live. It's, it's not true. Some sensitive people react adversely to ion generators or salt lamps. Uh, some crystals are really ungrounding for some people. If you do have crystals in your home, make sure that you're clearing them every single day because they do absorb energies. You just be aware of all this and realize how many action steps that you can take to help yourself make your home a safe place for you. And moving on, sure, you know, people may want to cut down a forest so that we can build another subdivision or resort the same way <laughs> we may really want to eat white flour and white sugar birthday cake. We want to, but neither serves in creating a safe, healthy place for us to live. The trees detoxify the air for us. We obviously need them. It's not a question. Science tells us the answers to our problems already. We just need to take action. We already know that eating certain foods cause inflammation inflammation that can be the trigger for health conditions to manifest. We already know that sugar is an outright destroyer for our bodies. We already know that smoking and drinking alcohol are severely toxic to our bodies. And yet people continue to expose their bodies to these harmful elements. As sensitive empaths, I'm sorry to say, but it's true. We can feel these effects whether we live a clean lifestyle or not. Because we're all connected and empaths experience each other's energies directly. It's part of our purpose to educate people about why living a toxic lifestyle is so dangerous and harmful. So if you as a sensitive empath aren't yet taking consistent action steps to live a clean lifestyle, you're feeling the brunt of a toxic load within yourself that can debilitate you either physically, mentally, emotionally, or all three, because you're also feeling the toxic load from outside of you. Okay. You're so you're feeling all of it. Now you can energetically clear other people's toxic energies away from you but you can't energetically clear the harmful effects of toxins that you've purposefully exposed yourself to through your diet and lifestyle. You have to do the work to get these chemicals out of your life and then you can start working with energy to clear on that level so you can begin to heal and detoxify yourself. But the foundation is to keep them away in the first place. I mentioned that my son and I have some pretty intense genetic variants. They explain why we both suffered so much before I cleaned up our diet and started working consistently with energy for clearing for us. Epigenetics explains why you can't tell how sensitive our bodies are just by meeting us and looking at us. We've cleaned up our lives and those genes aren't able to influence our abilities to be healthy and to function as highly as possible like they once did. My son didn't sleep through the night until he was almost six years old. He had severe food allergies and sensitivities. He screamed and cried all the time. He was almost always sick. He couldn't learn to read or write, and he was hyperactive and unfocused. This last school year, he won a national writing award and starred as the lead in his school's musical. He's 15 years old intellectually gifted and is starting college classes in the fall at the community college where we live. We turned everything around for him by working with energy in the ways that he needs rather than allowing the energy to control him. And you can do this too. And I'm sharing all of this with you because I believe in you. Now, everyone is different and your child or you may or may not be able to heal as much as mine did. But I assure you that every step you take in eliminating toxic elements from their life and your life will make a difference, not only for you and for your child, but for all of us. Empaths feel each other and we can feel the pain and suffering of this planet. So let's each do our part to ease some of that in the ways that we can within our own personal lives. If you want to find out more about genes and epigenetics, I really recommend reading Dr. Ben Lynch's book, Dirty Genes. 
And you can find that easily online or in bookstores called Dirty Jeans by Ben Lynch. So you can also visit me online at empoweredthriving.com to find my books and articles and courses that talk more about all the things I talk about on this show. And you can find my self-paced masterful empath course through learn.sacredstoriesmedia.com. So thank you for being here today. I'll be back next week with more empowering information to support you and your sensitive children. So until next time, stay empowered and do what you can do to keep toxins away from yourself and your family. Thank you for listening today. Please join us next week as Janice answers listener questions and provides more inspiration and practical applications for you to live a healthy, productive life as an empath.